Hi, I'm Lisa with Lisa Boone Designs. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited to share this journey of redoing an 1800s spool cabinet for one of my clients. Now, when she gave it to me, it was in very disres disrepair. It didn't have a back uh, piece. It was missing wood in the inside and the drawers weren't closing. It was literally filled with mouse poop, uh, spider critters and webs and eggs and dirt. Um, just nasty because it had been in, in a barn and, and in the garage for so long. They live on a farm and so it needed help and I talked my husband into helping me and I told him that we had to take it apart he didn't believe me until he started really looking at it and he's like no we could just nail it and I was like no we have to take it apart we have to in order to do it right because there were so many gaps on the molding in the bottom so what we ended up doing is buying wood and measuring each piece at a time because you could see that there was um the wood didn't go all the way back so we got these clips and we connected the original wood with the new wood and that enabled the drawers to go all the way and not fall so that was really good and he started getting confident and excited we glued it all back together the frame we nailed it into place and it started becoming a lot more sturdy now this piece was filthy filthy like i said and so they, it required a lot of cleaning the drawers had a big gap in the very front so he wanted to fix that we didn't want to take the drawers apart because the dovetailing was so fragile and thin so he just cut the nails in the back put it back in and nailed it and they were perfect now this had been repaired at some point there was lots of nails unneeded nails there was holes everywhere and so we fixed that we took off the original hardware because it they were shattered and in pieces and it wasn't incomplete and then we started cleaning and cleaning and cleaning some more and then cleaning a little bit more i used tsp mixed with water I used crud cutter, I used vinegar in water and blue dawn and a lot of rinsing with fresh water until I thought it was clean enough that I could start working with it. The drawers were crusted with mouse poop and so we had to scrape it and vacuum it and it was nasty. I used Barkeeper's Friend on the plaques. I was trying to see how clean I could get them and I wasn't able to restore them, but this is an 1800s piece. I am always of the opinion that it doesn't need to be perfect. These drawers have gorgeous details on it. The dovetailing, the details on, and on the front, just there's, it's just such a beautiful piece. And the top broke in three pieces, and so there was a lot of dirt that went inside on there and then also inside of the drawers because there was a missing back. So after cleaning it and scraping it, um, then I was able to go ahead and start working on it. I took Durham's putty powder and I mixed it with water. You can mix this as thin or as thick as you like. It does dry very rock hard. In this particular scenario, I used a thinner consistency because I really wanted that Durham's wood putty to get in to all of the crevices because there were so many uneven crevices. Now here at for where the top of the wood meets the bottom of the base, I actually used IOD's air dry clay. After I had put the putty powder and sanded it down, I put a big patch as you can see here of putty again because there were so many inconsistencies in that wood and it was very unleveled I did that and then once I sanded it after it dried I went ahead and I primed it very rarely do you see me priming pieces but this one needed to be primed because of the putty the amount of putty I put on there and so and in case there was any bleeding, I did that with a sponge that I could just throw away. 
I did two coats of shellac and let it dry. My client said she wanted it to be a creamy color, so I picked DIY Paint Creamy. Now this is actually the same client that I did the green antique for. So this was her second painted piece and she gave them both to me at the same exact time and she trusted me with these pieces. And I'm just so excited that I was able to do this for her. I went ahead and I applied one coat of DIY Paints Crinoline with my Klingon S30 brush and I just got it all over. DIY Paint is a clay based paint, it's a chalk style paint and if I got any paint anywhere where I didn't need it, I know that I can easily remove the paint because we didn't want the plaque to ha be painted so I was I don't have to worry about being careful I just painted it with the drawers inside and then once it dried I removed the drawers and I just painted on the inside so that it just flows a little bit better if the drawers um, move a little bit or on the sides you you don't see the wood it's just an even coating and then I did a second coat of DIY paint and you can see that it covers really well. Whenever I'm doing a distressed piece, I don't worry about full, full coverage. But on the top, there was a lot of inconsistency because of the wood putty. So I did another coat on top and I did a crisscross hatch type brush stroke so that I could apply texture using the paint. Once the paint dried and I distressed it, I did seal everything with Sweet Pickens Top Coat. I wanted to do something special for her and surprise her. The drawers had been such a wreck and so I had this vintage wallpaper and I turned my drawers over just to get a rough sizing. I used my blade and my metal ruler and I cut the piece to, to size and then I really fine-tuned it when I flipped it back over. This was such a special touch and for me it just revives it in a way where you know you don't have to worry that a mouse had been in there you don't remember that you just see the beauty of the piece and now she can store whatever she wants to store in it and feel confident that it's clean and it's it's hers now this is a piece that was in her husband's family and so it's a special piece I took my wallpaper paste and I applied a thin coat using my chip brush that I do have on my website and I put that on the back side and then also on inside of the drawer The wallpaper paste gives you a little bit of wiggle room so you are able to move the paper. It doesn't dry very fast and you can adjust it so that you get it exactly where you want it. Then I take my wallpaper tool and I make sure that I remove all of the air pockets and make sure that that paper is adhering to the drawer and then I remove the excess with a baby wipe. I take the baby wipes and I clean up my plaques. I distress the piece. I also did a little bit of sanding to distress in some sections. And I forgot. I forgot about the drawer pulls. So I went ahead and I took out my IOD air dry clay and I just smudged it in there into the original holes because my new hardware, it was just single holes. And then I just applied a little bit of paint over it and it worked great. I have this special tool for hardware. It just helps to get it on the same spot. I mark my spots, I drill my hole, and then I get my husband to help me twist it because I can't do that twisting motion. Let's look back at what it looked like before. And now, let's look at this. Distressed in all the right places. It totally fits the piece, doesn't it? Let me know what you think in the comments. I love the hardware. It matches those plaques so perfectly. They're feminine and just beautiful. 
and I really love it. The creamy wallpaper background just matches perfectly with DIY Paints Crinoline and it really is a beautiful piece. These pieces are so beautiful. I've seen so many kinds um, that we have had in our store and in different antique stores. If you see one, pick it up because they are really just so beautiful. And there's so many things that you can put in it. The drawers are ample, they're wide and long. What would you put in a spool cabinet? I think it would be perfect for a crafter. <laughs> I love the way that it turned out. I love the way that it looks. I'm glad that she picked this creamy color. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I so appreciate your support and your kindness. Have an incredibly blessed day. Ciao.